Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to share a whole week of cheap low carb meals. These are all really easy meals that are low carb, keto diet friendly and budget friendly too. And I've written a full blog post which I'll leave down below which will have all the recipes, everything you need to make these easy meals. And make sure you leave a like, subscribe for more videos and leave a comment to let me know what is your favorite low carb cheat meal. And I've also shared in the past breakfast, lunch and snacks, which I will leave down below. So let's get straight into it with dinner number one. As today is Monday, the first day of the week, I am making a veggie casserole because I like to do a bit of a meat free Monday, not have so much meat in my week. So so I am making a broccoli and Brussels sprout casserole. I've shared a broccoli casserole in the past and also a Brussels sprout gratin. This is kind of going to be a combo of the two of them. So I'm going to get on and chop up all these veggies, which this whole broccoli was a euro and these Brussels sprouts were reduced to 37 cents. So super, super cheap meal. Whatever veggies are in season, use that in your veggie casserole. So we're going to chop them all up pop them into this dish and get cooking. So I've chopped up the Brussels sprouts and the broccoli. I've got a couple of rows of each, which are all going to be mixed together now anyway, because I'm going to add cream, sour cream and cheese, just a few more ingredients, mix it all through, but you can feel free to have any veggies you like, add in some onion, garlic, anything you like, but I like keeping it simple and having cheesy goodness. So we're going to add in our sour cream, I've measured out a quarter of a cup and I'm just going to keep that quarter of a cup. So we've got a quarter of a cup of sour cream. I'm going to use a quarter of a cup of cream and a quarter of a cup of cheese. And we're going to mix that all through our broccoli and Brussels sprouts. So you can see there's the sour cream, the cheese, the cream. And now we're really just going to mix it all through until it's all completely incorporated. And it's all mixed through beautifully. Every single inch is covered in our beautiful sauce of cream, sour cream, cheese. And now I'm going to top it with even more cheese. And that is perfect. And my oven has just come up to temperature. So I've got it on 180 degrees Celsius, which is 350 Fahrenheit. And it's going to go in 15, 20, maybe even 25 minutes. I'm just going to keep an eye from 15 just so that the cheese doesn't burn, but that it crisps up and everything cooks through and I'll show you when it's perfect and done. And there you go, it's out the oven. Look at all the cheesy goodness, the broccoli, the Brussels sprouts. I love it just like this. You could leave it a little longer if you want it more browned, more crispy. That is totally up to you. So that is today's cheap keto dinner idea. This is a lovely veggie meal, nice and filling, low carb, high fat, keto friendly. And keep watching for a whole week more of ideas. After yesterday's veggie meal, I'm making a meaty one today. I've got silk side Irish corned beef. Now, this was just under a kilo, which is about 2.2 pounds. It's not quite focusing. And it was €8.84. Now, it's up to you whether you think that is super budget or bargain friendly or a little expensive. I think for the four of us and leftovers, that that's pretty good. Not as cheap as yesterday's or other meals I'm going to share this week, but definitely budget friendly when compared to roast lamb or roast beef. So I am going to cook the corned beef and serve it with some some lovely low carb sides. <laughs> Look at this bargain. I've got a cabbage here and I'm going to cook the cabbage with the silver side at the end. I'll show you how a bit later and I'm going to make cauliflower mash as well. So that is going to be our big beautiful meal for today starting with making the Irish corned beef and I'm going to cook that for about an hour and a half and the Irish way to do it is to just pop it straight into the water. I don't put seasonings but you can feel free to put salt, pepper, onion, garlic, even a carrot which you won't eat but just get the flavor from. It's usually got so much flavor that it's been prepared in that I'm quite happy with that but do as you wish. So let's go and I'm going to just cover this up with water and bring it up to the boil. I've parked the heat on, the silver side is in a pot and I'm just going to bring it up to the boil. Once it's boiling, reduce it to simmer and let it cook for an hour and a half. Simmer away gently and then it'll be done. There's about 20 minutes until my meat is ready so I'm going to make cauliflower mash. I've chopped that whole head of cauliflower into little bite sized pieces and now I'm just going to cover it up with boiling water and salt and we're going to bring it up to the boil and then reduce it to simmer until we have cauliflower mash. 
cauliflower is coming up to bubble I'm just gonna keep an eye on it and the meat is almost ready so I'm actually gonna see to my cabbage now what I've done is I've sliced up half the head of cabbage it kind of looks a bit like noodles and once the meat is ready we're gonna remove it from the water it's been boiling in and pop the cabbage in and just cook it until it's softened add a little bit of butter so it's buttery and it's got all the flavor of the meat that is the Irish way to do it so I've got my cabbage all prepared meat is almost ready once it's ready we will take the meat out and pop the cabbage in the meat is done look at it beautiful I'm just gonna leave it to rest a little bit it's always nice with meat to just leave it to rest it gets more flavor and it's easy to cut so while it is resting I'm going to cook my cabbage the cabbage is now in the saucepan where the meat was and I've added a bit of butter on top and just gonna mix it through let it bubble away for a few minutes and it absorbs all the beautiful flavor and the cauliflower is also almost ready. It'll all kind of be ready at the same time. Soon as that cauliflower is easily mashable, check on the cabbage and bring it all together. So the cauliflower is ready to be mashed and it's a bit steamy. I've added in butter and cream and I'm just going to mash it with my potato masher that I use for cauliflower mash. Okay, just getting that nice and smooth. Try to get it a little less steamy for you so you can see what I'm doing. I've just mashed it together. We've got the meat over there which we're going to cut up in a sec and I've got the cabbage which is cooked. You can see it's all translucent, also very steamy as well. And I'm going to put a plate together with all of my keto goodies now. And that is my plate full. Doesn't it look beautiful? The beautifully cooked corned beef silver side, the cabbage and the cauliflower too. That's just such a perfect low carb keto dinner which is pretty budget friendly too. And I've still got a week full of easy keto cheap dinner ideas so keep watching for those. And for tonight's dinner I'm going to make a low carb version of tuna noodle casserole. I've got cabbage which I'm going to make into noodles. You've got tuna sour cream and cream to make a lovely creamy sauce and cheese of course because I just feel tuna cheese this goes so well together so first we're going to chop up the cabbage into noodles I've cut the cabbage in half and now I'm just cutting it into little noodles look at this it's just really cutting along and we'll just make a whole plate full of cabbage noodles and I've got a whole plate full of noodles look at this cabbage noodles they really look like noodles I've used half of that whole head of cabbage it's gonna be a meal just for myself and my husband tonight so I'm using half the cabbage but use the whole cabbage as much as little as you want if you're making it just for one then just cut enough noodles for you so we're gonna melt some butter in the frying pan and get these cooking Butter is melted, pan is nice and hot, cabbage noodles are in. They really look like noodles, don't they? I know I've said it already. And so I'm just going to add salt and keep adding butter and tossing until all the noodles have softened. The noodles are starting to soften. They need a little while longer before we add in the other ingredients. I'm happy with how they've browned. Look, they kind of look like noodles and they're a little translucent, a bit see-through. So now we're going to add in the other ingredients, starting with the tuna. And I'll just give it a toss through to heat through. And I added in a couple of tablespoons of cream and a couple of tablespoons of sour cream. And we'll give it a, all a good mix through to get it nice and creamy. And finally we'll stir through a whole lot of grated cheese and it will be ready. And I've taken it off the heat and you can see the tuna, the noodles, the cheesiness. It is such a comfort dish. So easy, so cheap as well. All these ingredients. You always got them to hand most likely when you're on keto. Mm, this is such a yum. Easy, cheap, low carb meal to put together. So that is today's meal. Keep watching for heaps more. And for dinner tonight, I'm making boneless burgers. I'm using lettuce as buns instead <laughs> look at this was a euro now five cents for all of this lettuce yes it needs to be used by today but I'm gonna make lettuce buns and I might make some salad and stuff and just use it through the day as well might even fry some up and keep it for tomorrow just so it's cooked and yeah <laughs> whole lettuce for five cents and this beef mince it's three euro fifty for 900 grams I'm going to use half of it today and the other half tomorrow so today I'm going to make burgers tomorrow I'm going to make a different budget friendly mince meal that's low carbon keto friendly so keep watching for that but for now 
let's make some burgers. So we can take half of this beef mince and I just like salt and coriander with mine. Use any herbs, spices. I don't put egg or any kind of alternative flour or anything in it. I find it quite well forms into burgers with just salt and coriander. So that is what I'm going to do. So I've halved the beef mince, half of it is on the plate here. I've topped it with the salt and the coriander and now kind of like roll it around the plate, get all of that seasoning incorporated into the beef mince. And then I'll just break it into four pieces, so into quarters, and form it into four beef patties. Okay, I've got butter sizzling in the frying pan behind me. I've formed my burger patties. They're not perfect, but you won't really notice once they're inside the buns, the lettuce buns. So I'm just going to heat up my butter and then cook my burgers till they're done on both sides. And the burgers are in the frying pan and I'm really just going to cook them, keep an eye on them and flip them over once one side is done and cook them until they're browned on both sides and the meat is completely cooked through. The burgers are ready. I'm just going to pop them all into their lettuce cups. And I've got mine dressed with a bit of grated cheese and sour cream. And you just pop the lid on top. And you've got a perfect low-carb keto-friendly burger, which really didn't cost much at all. And it's just so good. I love it like this. It's nice and light and perfect. And you can include your favorite burger toppings. I've often made fried eggs, sautéed some onion, mushrooms, peppers, whatever you normally like with burgers. You can just pop it into a lettuce bun instead. So that is the cheap, low-carb meal for tonight. And tomorrow night, I will do something else with the rest of the beef mince. So keep watching for that. And today I am making a no-bake moussaka. Now I found this recipe on the BBC website for a hob-to-table moussaka and I have adapted it, taken out some ingredients, popped some in. I'll leave the instructions in the blog post down below, but briefly, I've got some chopped tomatoes. You can use a can. I found a little carton of Italian chopped tomatoes. We've got some feta. We have an eggplant and I've got the rest of the beef mince from yesterday. So I've got the other 500 or so, 450, 500 grams of beef mince. You could definitely add an onion, garlic, leek, whatever you want, but I feel like the eggplant and the tomatoes are definitely enough carbs here. So what I'm going to do is get on and chop up my eggplant and get cooking. I've melted butter in a frying pan. I've got the beef mince in and I'm just going to cook it until it's browned all over. While the mince is cooking, I've chopped up the eggplant into little cubes. Meat's browning nicely. I've added in my very roughly chopped eggplant. I'm going to toss it through just to also get it all browned. The eggplant's starting to get a bit of colour on it. The meat's all browned, so we're going to add in the tomatoes. And the chopped tomatoes are in, and we'll just give it all a toss through so it's all evenly distributed. And we're just going to cook it, add a bit of water if it needs it. Just keep cooking it until it's all cooked through and beautiful. There you go, chopped tomatoes are in. I love how it looks. It's only three ingredients so far, just the feta at the end. And it's just such a simple dish. So I am going to bubble this away to make sure that the meat cooks through and the vegetables as well. And it just becomes a beautifully rich and flavorful dish so if you feel that you need to add more liquid you can add water stock whatever you like to i love how beautiful and rich it's looking bubbling away there you could of course include any other vegetables you want i'm quite happy with just the eggplant and the meat and the tomato so i'm just going to let it bubble away and just thicken up a little more and then it'll be ready that's looking pretty perfect to me so i'm going to take it off the heat and it's looking pretty lovely and flavorful like that. Now, I find feta just at the end brings it all together and you really get that flavor of moussaka. But you can add any cheese you want or you can make a cheese sauce to enjoy with it, however you like. Or you could really just pop it into the oven, pop cheese on top and make it in the oven. But I like just having it hobbed to table, one frying pan to clean up. That is it. So we're going to crumble the feta on top. And it's done just leaving it a sec for the feta to kind of melt in there and to absorb all the flavors. It's such a perfect dish and it's budget friendly too. I forgot to add that. The eggplant was only 49 cents and the feta was a euro. The meat was left over and the tomatoes were I think 80 or 90 cents for that little carton. So 
really really budget friendly and it's such a yum way to enjoy masaka that's low carb keto friendly and super 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 easy so that is tonight's dinner keep watching for a couple more easy low carb meals that are budget friendly too and today I'm doing something with cauliflower. Uh, cauliflower is another one of those great keto ingredients that can be really economical at the moment. They're either at one euro twenty-five, two euro, depending on the size and the quality of it. But this big, huge one was two euro, just two euro for all this. And actually, I got a one euro twenty-five euro one the other day too. But anyway, with cauliflower, you could make cauliflower rice, cauliflower mash. You could make cauliflower casserole. You can use it really in so many ways. But what I'm going to do is a bit of a mishmash of flavors that I quite enjoy. So I'm going to chop the cauliflower into little florets, just like that. And now I'm going to melt some butter in the frying pan and get started cooking. So I've got it in here with some butter and I also chopped up very roughly some garlic. And I'm going to saute that and also shake over a whole lot of turmeric. I love the smell of it, love it with cauliflower. I'm going to really just let it cook down until it's nice and browned and cooked through and then maybe add a couple more ingredients too. So I've given it all a toss through and it's up to you about adding turmeric. You can skip the turmeric if you don't want to really add any other spice, seasoning, salt, pepper, anything you like. I just love turmeric with cauliflower. It's just such a beautiful flavor combination. And I'm just going to keep adding butter, a bit of salt along the way until it is cooked perfectly. I just love the vibrant color of it. You can see by adding more butter along the way, it all gets absorbed in. And it does increase the fat content, which is what we want. So it's almost done. I'm quite happy with how that's looking. Now, if you want, you could add some cream, cream cheese, sour cream, mascarpone, and a bit of cheese. And you've got a one-pot mac and cheese. Or what I'm going to do is move it off into a bowl. And to just bring a bit of protein into it and to bring all the flavors together, I'm going to top it with a sprinkling of parmesan. Just like that. And that is a perfect flavor combination. I love the turmeric, cauliflower, parmesan, garlic. Really simple flavors, but they're all strong and work so well together. So that is the cheap, low-carb meal for tonight. And for my final low-carb, cheap meal of the week, I'm making my best ever chicken bake. And look at this. All these chicken drumsticks were €2.79. I'm using this jar of pasta sauce, which was €1.34. And this cheese was about a euro and I'll use a couple so of it, maybe more, maybe less. We'll see how we go. But that's it pretty much. You can use your lowest carb pasta sauce. You can find these three ingredients. The family ask for this again and again and again. I've shared this recipe on the blog. I've shared videos with it. And if you haven't seen it already, I'm sharing it again today to show you the easy deliciousness. So I've got the oven preheating to 180 degrees Celsius, which is 350 Fahrenheit. And we're going to pop the chicken and the sauce into a baking dish. So I've popped all the chicken drumsticks into the dish. I've topped it with most of the jar of that sauce and I'm just really moving it all around, making sure every inch is covered, tossing them around, just getting all that sauce beautifully distributed amongst our chicken and we won't put the cheese in until much later. We're just going to cook it, get it nice and cooked and then we'll pop cheese in at the end to crisp up. But this is going to go into the oven, which is 180 degrees Celsius, 350 Fahrenheit. It's going to go in for half an hour and then we'll see how it goes. The chicken's been in the oven for half an hour. I'm just going to turn all the pieces over and top it with some grated cheese just like that and now it's going to go back into the oven for a final half an hour or 45 minutes what i do is pop it in for half an hour have a look and if it's perfectly done then it's perfectly done and ready otherwise i'll give it a final 15 minutes just to make sure everything's cooked through and nice and crispy and it only needed another half an hour and look at it beautiful crispy cheesy chicken goodness such a yum dish big family favorite and it's really so easy as you saw and budget friendly so that is the end of this video with seven low carb cheap meals i hope you've enjoyed watching and got loads of ideas for budget friendly meals that you can make that your whole family will enjoy that are low carb and keto friendly and remember to check down below for the link to the blog post with 
all of the information you need to make all of these yummy recipes. And remember to leave a like, subscribe for more videos, and comment to let me know what is your go-to cheap keto low-carb meal. And let me know what you want me to film next in this series. Do you want breakfast, lunches, a bit of meal prep? What would you like next in this low-carb cheap meals series? I look forward to reading your comments. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you again soon. Bye.